Okay guys, this is the second part of my video tutorial. In the first part, you know, I was showing you how to uh, just to make sure our web API. This is what I do. First, make sure, you know, all my web API and everything works before I start to consume them for by AngularJS or, or plain vanilla JavaScript or whatever. So that's if this would, you know, tell, this would, you know, um, give me everything that I need. Okay, now my get all the data and everything is working. The other thing you can do, um, you know, instead of just playing with the browser, um, let me close all of them. Okay. Okay, so, so far, you know, I, I showed you how to do a configuration in your global SX file and how to add um, your, your controller, web API controller into a web form and its configuration is done. Our, our database is all done. Now, next thing we, of course, you know, we start consuming this data from the AngularJS. Okay. So, of course, you know, these references is very, very important. The, the order of the reference is very important. You know, that's why a lot of people use the required JS and all those kind of libraries. But I'm not talking about all of those, so just, you know, uh, this this application is maybe for you know uh, useful for people who are just trying to learn Angular JS, is trying to use Web API and a Web Form and stuff like that. Not really intended for really you know super expert programmers out there. Um, you know. Anyway, so of course this is just have a reference to my Angular JS library. Once you download, you have a reference to this one, and I have a, a, you know resources also. That's why Angular JS resource. Um, and this is my app.js because I have defined um, I'll show you here this is my module is inside that file right there so that is why the first thing first reference is there stock market application right here and all these two files right here controller and service they are referring to this module that's why that would come first Okay, and, and after that, I, I have a service because, you know, uh, service is injected to the controller. That's why there is a reference to the service comes before the controller. And finally, the, the controller. And uh, I'm, uh, UI Bootstrap JS is not really, uh, I'm, I'm trying to use that for my edit, but I haven't completed that one yet. That is not really needed for this demo. Okay. Okay. Once I have all my markup is done, now I'm going to talk about how the, okay, the, the button right here, you know, the, let me run the application now. So, this is when, when, when you click on this one, the basically, you know, this, this record would be inserted into back end, right? So, I want to show you how this. Uh, really works in AngularJS. So I have a button here, and button has an ng click trig uh, directive directive here. And on ng click, I call this method called add stock market daily. Okay, that is the method I have defined inside my controller. So let's go into the stock market control here. Okay, see, so do you see this method right here? Scope add stock market daily method. So, the very first thing I do is like, you know, I define this um, this JavaScript object literal here. So, here's a stock name, which of course comes out from UI, current stock, you know, have in reference to scope, and the current market value and current symbol and the current whether the market value was up or down, which basically comes from my view, right? Once and then, basically, I have this object defined here. Once my object is defined, of course, you know, other thing I'm missing here is I don't have a validation yet. That I want to make sure you, in, in, in a real, up, you know, in a production site, in a real, up, you know, you always make sure it is valid before you basically hand this, uh, this piece of information to the service to persist the data or do whatever 
for further processing. Always make sure the validation is there. But in this demo, of course, you know, I don't have a validation. And then I have just, a, I call the service, right? I call the method in the service called save stock market. And here is the stock market data. Go ahead and see, purchase those information. And then this, uh, this angular here all I've done is basically hey here is a URL here is the data go ahead and post this information later on this is all async right later on when you're done posting and response comes up just notify me and then that's what this um, success is doing right okay when you everything is good you know use method is success right here I want to call this callback function here the callback function takes the data and the status. And if if I fall in here in this block of code, so I can, you know, okay, now I have to show you something in the markup. Do you see if I, if I add something here, like let's say, I'm just, let's say today it went down or something. Oh, really crass. That's really big down, right? Okay, you see that little green thing that came up? That is what is done by this little piece of code here. So in my um, markup or in in a view, I have this section. Also, let me show you. This section right here. This piece of code. Here, I uh, because you know I have a uh, this little section called operation action message, and then I give ID, and then I, I'm using here the ng show directive, and then I'm assigning that to unsuccessful submit variable that I showed you before, and then I'm binding into inside the div I have a little span tag into here. I would like to show that message, but by default it will not be visible. This, even though this dump is here, but it wouldn't be visible because this variable unsuccessful submit into the controller has been set to false by default. See right here, unsuccessful submit. We don't, it hasn't been submitted yet. It's and we even we don't know whether the you know retrieval of data or, or submission of data becomes successful or not. That is why it's set to false. But however, if you go down here add its stock market daily and if it is successful then that's this this is this piece of code right here it set it to right here it set it to true and then I'm using this you know the time out uh, functionality provided by AngularJS so basically I'm saying hey this is my callback function right up to here so what I wanted to do I um, I would like to display that message for a uh, right away, but however, after the interval of three, that's like a three, uh, three, three second. That's why like, after three second that would disappear, and then I would like to reset the balance too because I don't. So let me show you what I mean by resetting the balance. I enter something here. as soon as the banner is gone all the balance is reset to as it was that's what I mean by reset resetting all the values that little method right here called reset values is done but so basically setting all those my model into the empty string so since my model changed right here and those views also get changed automatically that is why AngularJS rocks right okay anyway and then of course you know once it, it becomes successful my message is gone I have to make sure I bind this grid right here so that you know additional data would be displayed into the grid that is to 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 uh, how to okay that is to just do um, how to process data into database right so um, and then of course you know eventually this map this this piece of code stock market daily 
would be 